Welcome back. Broadcasting live from the Santon Medi Clinic this morning. We are at uh, Dr. Fantonda's rooms. We'll tell you a little bit more about what Dr. Fantonda actually does. Well, we're focusing in on reproductive health for particularly women and the emotional and difficult journey one goes through when it comes to IVF, when it comes to freezing of eggs and trying to have children in a very sort of, you know, difficult time in your life. We've spoken about the psychological toll it does take on you when you're not able to fall pregnant and then, of course, are going through all of the fertility treatments. But there is a lot associated with it. Now, there are so many risk factors. Age plays a very important role. Of course, in terms of money, that's another thing we haven't even touched on, the expense that comes with it. But how successful is it? Um, for those of you that have been through it, I'm sure many of you have got stories to tell, uh, particularly when you're taking hormones and exactly how it makes you feel. But it's incredible that this is a conversation that we don't seem to have very often. And I'm glad that we are tackling this topic this morning head on and trying to be as frank as we possibly can with this very important conversation. So joining me now, I am joined by um, uh, Dr. Fantonda himself, Dr. Venant Fantonda. He is a subspecialist obstetrician and gynecologist Oncologist at the Santon Medi Clinic. Um, Dr. Fantona, what a pleasure. Thank you very, very much for having us here in your practice and being open to speaking to us this morning. Thank you very much, Leanne. Yeah. Um, if, we look, if, if we look at the 30 years, I mean, we've been doing this quite a lot over most different topics that we cover here uh, on Morning Live and also just in general for the health and life of South Africans. If we look back at 30 years de of democracy, egg freezing, um, reproductive health, IVF, have we progressed a lot in South Africa? I think over the th uh, past 30 years we have progressed a lot. Um, we've got the SASRIC um, Association which um, are really building infertility availability in South Africa. There are more units opening up, there are more people trained as uh, subspecialists, um, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely progressing in South Africa. Yeah, and availability. Also, and and that's it's 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 a great thing. Obviously, it's one that we we need to educate viewers about. I mean, I'll just talk of a couple of conditions, whether it be cancer, endometriosis. Um, polycystic ovaries, you know, there, there are still opportunities available to women to go the route of freezing their eggs. Perhaps you can talk to us about the process of this and when, when one should consider going this route. So generally we say as early as possible in your fertility life. And the reason we say that is over the years from puberty to menopause, your egg count decreases but it's not only your egg count it's your quality of your eggs and it becomes significant at the age of 36 that's why we try to f uh, freeze eggs before the age of 36 mm. um, but as early as possible um, and the quality of these eggs are influenced by um, genetics uh, diseases like polycystic ovarian disease and endometriosis and also obviously um, what we do do you smoke do you use excess of alcohol all these things have an influence on your air quality mm. and uh, that's why we say as soon as possible and in case of uh, cases of cancer we um, as soon as the patient is diagnosed, we prefer the patient to be referred for a full consultation and thereafter the decision to harvest the eggs as soon as possible or to do, um, to do um, freezing of sperm or tes testicular tissue or ovarian tissue. Yeah. And different techniques are involved in this. Uh, that was going to be my next question in terms of the technique that's used. I, I must say you're educating me here because I, I, I was telling um, Chantal earlier, who happens mm. to be your wife, so you yeah. guys have been through this uh, m m on more than one occasion. So you speak from, from great experience here besides seeing so many different patients along the way. But in terms of, of egg freezing, what is the procedure? What, what does a woman go through 
in order to have her eggs frozen? So, so the procedure is uh, normally started with a consultation and evaluation of the patient and her, um, her, yeah, her fertility potential and how many eggs we can harvest, what dosage of medication we're going to use, etc. Um, um, it started by um, normally stimulating the patient um, w with uh, hormonal medication, basically FSH alone or FSH and LH in injectable forms and normally the patient uses that for about 10 days. Mm. After 10 days um, we normally do a, um, a trigger uh, where we uh, where we actually un where the egg actually undergoes its final maturation phase and then um, 35 uh, 34 to 36 hours later we extract the eggs under uh, sedation and uh, given normally by anesthetist and uh, then the eggs are frozen in the laboratory mm. after cleaning all the surrounding cells okay. and we freeze only metaphase to our sites. How long can you freeze an egg for? That it can still be used? Indefinite. Indefinitely? Yeah. So you can and, and they, the, the, the freezing happens here in South Africa, it is stored in South Africa. Yeah, most of the eggs are stored in South Africa. If people m move abroad, um, there's also ways and means to trans transfer it overseas. Okay. And um, yeah, so it can be stored and a lot of people ask me, um, what happens to the egg if you thaw it? Mm. So with modern freezing uh, or cryopreservation techniques at least 99% of these eggs do survive. Sure. In under bad conditions at least 94%. Amazing. So a procedure like that, because I'm going to move on to IVF after that, a procedure like you know having your eggs frozen and then you know trying to when you are ready, if anything does happen, have have a baby like that. Um, how much is a procedure like that? Because the, the cost is a is a massive focus of this, I imagine. Yeah. So egg freezing in South Africa in the private sector can cost anything between um, fifty and one hundred and twenty thousand, depending on the unit. Um, and uh, yeah, so it is very costly. Yeah. Um, the sooner we do it, um, or at a younger age, the, the easier the stimulation. So you don't use a lot of medication. Okay. So with minimal stimulation, you can get the same effect as in an older woman with older Indeed. So follicles. If we, so that's, that's one of them. And just in terms of, of the amount of procedures that a woman can have for freezing their eggs, can I come in more than once? Yeah. Okay. We, in most cases, we want at least 20 to 30 um, our sites to be um, frozen. Um, yeah. And the reason for that is because we know how many embryos potentially we can create out of those 20 to 30. Um, and so sometimes it is mul multiple procedures that's needed, that's depending needed. on the age of the patient okay. and the quality. How many can you get air out in one in one procedure in terms of eggs? Well, um, mostly, mostly the ideal is between eight and fifteen, but yeah. in in very young um, patients. Um, freezing the eggs, they can, it can go up to 50, 60 in wow. one go. It's incredible. That's fascinating. I yeah. have no idea. IVF now, this is something that I, I must say I've had many, many um, close friends go through and I've mm. watched the difficult journey and it yeah. is a very difficult journey. And, and Chantal and I spoke in an earlier crossing about the psychological toll. It takes not only on the woman, in her body, the hormones and everything else, but also on her partner. It's a, it's a big thing. 
But in terms of IVF, how successful is it? So, there are different uh, units that publish different um, figures. Um, so, if you look at worldwide figures, um, it's about 60% success of the three transfers wow. of embryos. Okay. So, and 30% uh, 30, 30 of people undergoing even all the IVF um, procedures and um, medications, etc., that's available, 34% of patients still don't fall pregnant, mm. Mm. which is very sad. In those cases, we can offer them sometimes donor egg, donor sperm, depending where, what the problem is. Sometimes we have to use surrogates, and people can also adopt. And that's also always a, a, a beautiful option to go through as well. But I, I want to ask you, and we have, we've been speaking about age as being a, a real big player in all of this, mm. and the younger the better, and obviously your, your fertility and your health is better. However, there are a lot of women these days that, and, and that's why the egg freezing, I imagine, is a great way to go. But say you haven't done that, but you're, you're an older woman. When I say older, I'm allowed to say that you're heading more into your 40s. You still want to have children. Um, what is the eldest patient that you have helped have a child through IVF? 50 years of age. Wow. I normally don't um, um, advise patients over 50, and the reasons is for medical conditions that they have. Yeah, the risk just gets higher every yeah. year. And what they must also realize is that by the age of 70, a child will only be 20 years of age. So, uh, so there's a lot of ethical matters involved when you make, make that decision. But I think in most countries and in most units, uh, big units in the world, uh, the cut-off age is 50 years it's 50 of age. Years of age. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because these days you find that women are having children later and later, but it does mm. play a toll, and there are many issues to take into consideration around that. But there is always hope. I mean, yeah. I think that that's what's important, and, and that's why I'm loving the Hope Clinic that we, we, we hear and we find ourselves. Because you, you have a website, and I want to touch on that in case people want to join it. There's a, um, there's a website that you have a, a Q&A session. It's an online service and a Q&A session. The details, how does, that, how does that work? So basically the patients can post um, questions, and uh, we will supply academic answers as far as we can. Um, it's mostly done by my, um, by my nursing staff. Yeah. But if there are really very difficult questions and situations that they don't understand, they will always come to me and uh, I will then handle the more difficult cases. Well, Dr. Fontondo, it's been enlightening. It's, it's a topic that doesn't get enough attention, and I hope that those of you that have been watching have found it informative. I certainly have. L luckily, I'm, I'm done with my children. I don't want any more. I'm good. I'm good. I'm dealing with hormonal children at the moment. Never mind more my hormones. That's another story altogether. But so interesting, and it really is, especially when you're talking to parents that are going through something like this, how difficult it is. And the worst part is it's never spoken about. It's always something that is you know, spoken about behind closed doors and the, the, the difficulty that couples go through in this process. I think it's important that we do have these conversations and are very open about it. So Dr. Vainant uh, Fantonde, he of course is a subspecialist obstetrician and gynecologist talking to us about both IVF and of course freezing of eggs for women who of course are looking to have children have families or doing it much later on in their lives.